This landscape is exactly what I love about Arctic Scandinavia. The beauty of this bleakness and vastness, the imposing mountains and harsh weather. But if this adventure in one of my favourite parts of northern Sweden served as a reminder for anything, it's to expect the unexpected. Even when you've planned a trip thoroughly and have heaps of experience, adventures can still throw curveballs at you. It's the nature of it. Besides, what is it they say about the best laid plans? Oh, I'm getting tired and hot and hungry. Before I get stuck in, a quick intro may be in order. For those of you who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, I'm Anna. Best described as an adventurer with a soft spot for the Arctic, I'm all about doing cool things in awesome places. I like a slow pace so I can fully immerse myself in the beauty of wherever I am. Oh, and one other thing to tell you about me, I really hate mosquitoes. This adventure has taken me to the northern stretch of the Kunsleden, or King's Trail, in Arctic Sweden, where I'm tracking 110 kilometres between Nikolokta and Arbisko. My adventure starts with a short boat journey across a glacial lake, the peaks of the Kebnekaiser Massif and surrounding mountains standing tall against the horizon. Once back on terra firma, it didn't take long for the novelty of the unusually warm day to wear off. The heat today and the weight of my pack is definitely starting to take its toll. Uh, I am struggling, uh, but on the plus side I've only got about two kilometres left until I get to the mountain station at the foot of Kevin the Kaiser, which is Sweden's highest mountain, which is what I'm well, just about looking at at the moment. Good evening. Uh, I say evening because it's just gone 9.30 uh, and as you can probably tell by my reds, sweaty face and the fact that I've still got my rucksack on and I'm moving. Uh, I'm still trekking. It is so light still. We just had the summer solstice. So we are well into midnight sun season. I stopped at Kevin Kerr's mountain station for a couple of hours because I thought having a little break there uh, might mean that it got a bit cooler later in the day. It's just, it's a little bit cooler, not much. Um, and I also hope there'll be less mozzies. That bit of my plan failed. And I'm now just looking for somewhere to pitch up. I think I've found somewhere actually. Um, so, time to get my raincoat and probably gloves on, get my tent up without being eaten alive. Arr. Don't be deceived by how scenic that looks. I am getting absolutely swarmed by mosquitoes. This is not pleasant. <laughs> not pleasant at all. Oh. Hello from the inside of my tent, which is also pretty much the only place that is safe from those mosquitoes. Today, as first days on adventures go, it has been really tough, not gonna lie. The heat and the weight of my rucks have really, really got to me actually. It's now 20 to 11 and it's absolutely gorgeous outside. Oh my God, it's incredible. But there's about 50 million flying devils or mosquitoes as I think they're commonly called uh, just outside my tent. So I've got a little bit of the door open and that's how I'm gonna enjoy it. Good morning, and it actually is a flipping good morning as well. I slept so well. I mask on, I got about nine hours like solid sleep, and I've woken up this morning and it's absolutely glorious out. There's a little bit of a breeze as well, which is keeping the mozzies at bay. Oh, it feels good to be here now. <laughs> I think I'm over the 
the trauma of yesterday and I am happy to be here. This is the thing, this is what adventure is about. Like you have a tough day and you think, why the hell am I doing this? And then something changes and you're like, this, this is why I'm doing it. And this view that I've got right here, like look where I camped last night. This is absolutely sensational. Renewed after a good night's sleep, I set off on day two, feeling excited to be back in these mountains and intrigued to see what this adventure would have in store for me. Hello from Singi Stuga. Um, I don't know why, but this morning I kind of arbitrarily decided that I was going to make it all the way to Singi uh, before having lunch. Um, so that is what I did despite the fact that for like the last hour that I was hiking, I was very hungry. Um, but I paid a small fee and I can use the kitchen here, um, which means that I can make lunch without any mosquitoes harassing me, um, which is very nice. I can still see them through the window <laughs> um, and I'm very happy to be inside. The breezy afternoon meant a few more blissful hours of mosquito-free trekking. Reaching a particularly beautiful view of the route ahead, I experienced a familiar wave of gratitude for being able to spend time in this incredible place that literally makes my soul sing. I knew this was exactly where I wanted to pitch my tent for the night. So it's only 7.30 in the morning and my tent is already like a little canvas sauna. It is so hot in there. So it's quite breezy out. So I think I'm gonna cook outside, hopefully make my breakfast. Fingers crossed the mosquitoes don't find me. Surprisingly, those mosquitoes did find me outside, um, so I ended up going back into my tent and drinking my coffee and reading my book for an hour, which was really lovely. Um, but now I do actually have to get going, get some miles under my feet. It's forecast for rain this afternoon, um, which actually is quite an appealing thought after how hot it's been for the last few days. Not sure I'll think that while I'm getting soaked, but we'll see, maybe I will enjoy it. <laughs> Most people would have loved the hot weather that I started out with, but I'm clearly not most people because it is so much colder this afternoon and I couldn't be happier. Like it's overcast, it's gray, it's windy. There's a heck of a lot more snow and I'm absolutely loving it. After I left Selka, when the rain stopped this afternoon, I had this burst of energy and I kept on going, kept on going. And I just, I kept on thinking like, oh, I'll just go a little bit further because I might be somewhere really cool to camp. And it's, I haven't had that for the last few days because it's been, hot and I just wanted to finish by the time it comes to the end of the day but today I was like excited um and where I have found camp oh my gosh it is it ticks all the boxes I've got epic mountains epic snow there's a river it's gorgeous and it's actually sheltered from the wind because it is really quite windy um yes yes That sense of awe continued the next morning, even though the skies were once again blue and the sun was beaming down at me. Thankfully, the cooler air this bit higher in the mountains meant no mosquitoes and a much more pleasant morning at camp. Yeah. 
That has been the most glorious morning ever. The sun was nice and warm, the air was still cool, no mosquitoes. Oh, it's been absolute bliss. But it is time to get cracking. I've got about four kilometres to go uh, up to Chechka Pass, which is the highest point of the Kung Gladen. Um, and I'm actually feeling pretty good about it. I'm <laughs> feeling really good this morning. Stay done. I'm knackered, but found an absolutely stunning spot to camp, so worth pushing on. It always is. Good morning from my little riverside camp spot. Um, there have been a heck of a lot of mosquitoes this morning, so I'm still wearing my warm wool jumper, even though I am so hot, <laughs> but it's kind of keeping me protected. Gosh, that last stretch that I just did around the lake from Alisiara, I have never seen oh, so many flying insects, but I have found somewhere to camp tonight and it's absolutely stunning here. I might go for a dip. I'm gonna see if I can get into the lake, but I am very sweaty. Jumper is back on because there are still a lot of biting insects around, um, but I am oh, very hot. <laughs> Sadly, a swim did not happen because every midgey and his mate is hanging out down there waiting for me to get naked. Instead, I'm gonna get into my tent and I am gonna hide because that feels like the safest thing to do right now. It is only 8 a.m. but I am up and out. The sun is high in the sky and it's already quite hot. There were quite a lot of flying biting insects this morning so I was pretty quick at packing up and going. Um, although I did still manage to get bitten on the ankle by a, a horse fly I think which is not very comfortable. So la vie. pretty much ran down that uh, that hill behind me because there were so many horse flies and they were out for blood um, so I pretty much just jogged about 10 kilometers having a snack and a cold drink has given me a whole new burst of energy so I'm actually going to head to Arwiske today which means it's my last my last afternoon the last stretch I wish I could say that I was able to savour those final kilometres but the mosquitoes and wasps that relentlessly circled me put paid to that instead I sped my way to the end powered by the prospect of a shower and being able to get away from the mosquitoes And just like that, another week of trekking in this beautiful place is complete. I come on these trips, these adventures, 
partly to spend time in these really beautiful, incredible places, but also for the challenge. Um, and it just so happened that this week, that challenge manifested itself in the form of mosquitoes and pretty strong heat and sun. Not generally things that I come up here looking for. Regardless of those challenges, this adventure has been amazing. I'm forever saying that I feel like the best version of myself up here, and that is absolutely true of this week. My time here not only inspires and fulfills me, it also reminds me just how capable and strong I am, even if that reminder is delivered via mosquitoes.